Visuals are like plot points, you know? You don't just sort of write a story not knowing where you're going. You've got specific points you're trying to emphasize. Same thing with color. Color makes you feel a certain way. You know, pink, reds, greens, purples, all, all have an emotional effect on human beings. So you want to direct that color in service of the story you're trying to tell. You want the final product to be valuable. You want it to be um, something that you can be proud of and something that is valid as an, as an art form. As an art director, you try to make sure the game is consistent. You try to make sure that you know we're using color and shape and lighting to all enhance the particular story we're telling. We want to make sure that everything uh, emphasizes, you know, sadness, happiness, excitement, danger, um, low points, high points. What really puts it together is the concept. Is the concept art. Uh, the concept art will determine the lighting and the general macro of the look. It'll give you a good framing of the level and 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 give you the feel, which is probably the most important thing. The artist needs to get the feel of the level so he can put the appropriate details. We always go to an amazing lost civilization that we've never seen before. And that's always the challenge to come up with. This one, it's Sandlantis. It's this lost Arabian city that's uh, in the middle of nowhere. And the, the hard part there is coming up with something that looks believable, that we've never seen before, but also looks historically accurate. We definitely have a lot of different inspiration. Uh, and it definitely comes from everywhere in the company. I don't think there's a single person who has managed to sit still for the whole duration of the game and just do their own thing. They'll always want to contribute to the rest of it. You gotta do a lot of research into um, the architectural style, uh, what, are the, what are the sort of specific idioms that make something look authentic to that area, the motifs, you know, what are they doing, uh, what are the materials they're using. The texture shader artists um, paint textures for the surfaces that you see in the game. Um, they plug those into shaders uh, and then through the shader you can apply um, surface qualities like uh, sh wetness or dryness or whatever you need. My team's responsible for all the weapons, props, um, vehicles, uh, anything that moves in the game is not a character, is, uh, falls underneath the technical art uh, slash prop artist team. We kind of take the world that's given to us uh, and try to add motion to it, uh, try to add the subtleties that really sort of make a, uh, an environment pop, um, or take a collapse and add the dust, the debris, the, the volumetrics, and a little more of the bang to it. Uh, kind of like the frosting on the cake. Oh, man, that was close, huh? <sighs> Amy does a lot of research. Um, the cool thing about the games is they're based in history and reality. So she always comes up with something that is real, authentic, exists in the world in terms of legend, um, and then we have to come up with uh, what it looks like. We do a lot of research, and, and hopefully it's tangible in the game when people play it, uh, that the, you know, the devil's in the details, and uh, a lot of us are pretty um, kind of OCD, anal retentive, whatever you want to call it, about sort of perfecting the details of things and that we want it to be right you know if we're going to have a foreign language in the game we want it to be correct if we're going to say this level takes place in one area of the world we won't, we do a ton of research to make sure that it's accurate she holds us uh, pretty true to history so you can't just go crazy and like come up with all sorts of fanciful stuff it has to be rooted in something authentic so that's the challenge in, in terms of making these civilizations that look incredible and amazing, but everything in there is based on something we've done research about. We use film, we use whatever kind of reference we can get our hands on um, to, to see you know, how have other people represented this before and what do we want to do differently? You know, what are our favorite elements of that? What are the things that you know, are like the, those key moments? You know? We tend to go a little bit nuts in terms of gathering reference, in terms of talking about it, in terms of watching movies. We even had some of our team sliding down sand dunes in the desert to figure out just what that would look like. It was a very, very crazy, fun trip, uh, but it was fascinating and really actually inspiring to see that when you step in this, this really soft sand, uh, the sand flowing down the ridge actually looks so liquid, almost kind of equivalent to mercury, like there's a little bit of viscosity to it, but 
it actually looks like a liquid. Uh, and so we just went out there with our cameras, uh, got sand everywhere, and just pulled in a dozen hours of, of amazing reference of us diving down the dunes, of us uh, running up and down the dunes and crawling the different ways like you would actually move if you were tired because it was 114 degrees outside and we were exhausted. After collecting ridiculous amounts of reference, uh, we tend to just have at it in the sense that let's just start building things. There's definitely a degree of, okay, let's figure out the big shapes and let's figure out the big picture. But we are detail obsessed. So we sometimes go right for the details. And that sometimes isn't so bad a thing. Putting the details in the environment is actually a, a, a naughty dog quality, almost to a fault, you know. And, and you know, we actually have to stop ourselves from just putting too much. I assume Rich talked a lot about how just in depth he went to making sure that the London pub was completely authentic. And, and I can't say I was part of that. It would have just been just a few too many British people in the kitchen, if you will, <laughs> had we all kind of ganged up and, and tried to, to create it as authentically as possible. But I certainly did witness that and it was it was really, it's really nice to see whenever a Naughty Dog gets that into the details. I was particularly concerned about people in the UK make, feeling like this was a real place, uh, somewhere that maybe they recognised if they travelled to the east end of London. Uh, so that was a fairly easy sell for me with my teammates. Typical bloody yank, all talk. It felt like we'd already kind of hit the peak. How do we, how do we beat that? How do you beat so many Game of the Year awards. Like, do you? Do you, do you even try? And yes, you definitely try. <laughs> Whether you succeed or not probably isn't so important. <laughs> Everybody has done such an amazing job. You walk through the studio and you look at any monitor and you gotta take a double date. Uh, and you, wait, what level is that? Who's working on that again? Um, because it all looks so great. Uncharted is probably the most exciting uh, IP I've ever worked on because of just the improvements in each iteration, just the improvements from one, two, and three, um, the team continues to evolve and just get better. And whether that's just people that are just working really hard to create better content or the new blood that we're bringing in every iteration that adds a new flavor to the DNA uh, of the company and, and, and just puts it to the next level is just amazing. I can't wait for the next following games that we're going to be working on. Are you my enemy, American? Drake. Hmm? My name is Drake.